Thanks for tuning in to Witch Wednesdays with Steph for a chat about a new witchcraft topic every Wednesday morning. Welcome to Witch Wednesdays. I'm Steph, and you are listening to episode 69, Cauldrons. If you follow on Instagram, you will have already seen that there is a mini cast iron cauldron in the Beltane Sabbath box, which is why I wanted to bring you this episode now, because it is a functional cauldron. And if, as you are listening to this, there are still a few boxes available that I will have until the end of this week that should be if I ship them out this weekend, then they will get to you by Beltane to be ready to use since it is primarily a fire festival and cauldrons are in heavy use around that time. So wanted to tell you everything you needed to know about getting your cauldron ready to use. And of course, the disclaimer that I want to say right at the beginning is always be fire safe. So if you're going to light a fire inside your cauldron or go outside and light a fire underneath. Always have, you know, bucket of water, fire extinguisher, all of those things. And if you're going to be making food or tea inside of your cauldron, make sure your cauldron is marketed as food safe. So those are the disclaimers before we uh, get into all of this. Now, I also want to say that cauldrons can be anything. You can use, you know, just a pot on your stove as a cauldron. It does not have to be the large traditional cast iron, um, three-pronged bottom sort of heavy cauldron that is associated with witchcraft in movies. It can be absolutely anything, and you can call that a cauldron. That's perfectly fine. But what I am going to be focusing on in this episode is that cast iron cauldron. So that is what I'm using that term for. But if that doesn't interest you, you can always just use a regular old pot in your kitchen to do sort of the same kitchen Kitcheny witchcraft. So a little bit about the history of cauldrons. They have actually been around forever and had very, you know, humble beginnings that had no associations with witchcraft whatsoever. They were just used to cook things in a home over a fire. But of course, over time, they were associated more and more with witchcraft and the origins of that association sort of start from ancient Celtic myth. And that's because cauldrons there appear in connection with many magical transformations, like all the way back to Merlin. Uh, But it is mostly representative of the womb and fertility, and therefore is associated with the Celtic goddess Caridwen. And across the Wiccan tradition in general, the cauldron is a symbol of transformation and creative forces because the round shape and sort of the receptive sort of properties of a cauldron make it sacred to the goddess and obviously very logically associated with the element of water. But given that the heat is the, of a fire is necessary for the sort of transformative work of a cauldron, it's also viewed as sharing an association with both water and fire. So there's a lot of you know, fun associations with it, a lot of fun history with it. Um, But again, a very useful item used worldwide, but then associated with witchcraft as we sort of changed how we work in the kitchen and in our homes. So where to buy a cauldron, you're probably wondering. Plenty of options, whether you, you know, order the Beltane box or not. There are a lot of online shops where you can get a cauldron, Amazon, Etsy, eBay. They have lots of new and used options. And the benefit of having online retailers is that you can read customer reviews before you place an order. And you can also get them in new age or occult stores. They always have cauldrons, but they can cost more there. They're definitely marked up, so keep that in mind. But because modern cauldrons come in all shapes and sizes, it's a huge advantage to see them and hold them in store before making a purchase because some are very small size of tennis balls like in the Beltane box but you have others that are as big as beach balls like the size that you see in movies those still exist and you absolutely can buy those and use those so sort of the three main things to keep in mind when purchasing a cauldron is the size and shape needs to fit your lifestyle I mean if you travel a lot or even if you just plan on moving it around a lot in where you use it. Like maybe you're going to use it on your altar and then 
in your kitchen, then in your backyard, and you're moving it a lot. If you have a huge one, they're very heavy and hard to do that with. So you may want a smaller one that you can carry around with you. And you also really want to decide what kind of magic you plan on doing with the cauldron before you buy one. Because if you're doing mostly incense and paper burning, then smaller might be a good size. But if you are making tea or actually cooking in it, you might want to pick a larger one. And the third thing to keep in mind is that you do want to find one that is cast iron. It, it's obviously the most traditional material for a witch's cauldron for many reasons, but it's also just the best to use in spells and rituals because it can stand high heat and it's relatively easy to clean even if you're most you know extravagant messy spells it's relatively easy to clean up but cast iron is very traditional because it is a iron is a natural element and it provides this protective barrier between you know what's inside of the cauldron and the outside world but since it is a natural element it has what's called Sproul, which is, isn't that such a fun word? It's S-P-R-O-L-W. Oh, no, O-W-L, Sproul. Yes, there we go. Uh, And that is just the sort of magical energy that all natural items have. So anything that like comes from the earth. So Fae have sprawl and earth its soil itself has sprawl and so does iron so a cast iron cauldron already has this innate magical ability and it's just a fun word to say so those are the three things you keep in mind size and shape what kind of magic you're going to be doing and finding one that's cast iron but choice is totally up to you and you obviously can have more than one um you can get good quality ones for relatively inexpensive if you really are on the hunt for it. But you can definitely have a small one that you just keep on your altar and maybe a larger one that you actually use in the kitchen over you know, your gas stove top or maybe you have a fire pit in the backyard that you could use it over on a tripod. Could be a lot of fun. So how to care for your cauldron, of course. When you first get a cauldron, you want to cleanse it immediately after you receive it. This cast iron holds on to magical energy, as well as the energy of anyone who came in contact with it. And this is true for most items that you get because, you know, when it was shipped to you or when it was sitting at the shop or when it was being made, it was handled by other people. And magical items really can hold on to that energy of those people. So you definitely want to magically cleanse it when you get it. And a good way to do this is be multitasking because you can also make black salt, which is a great ingredient for protection spells and banishing spells. And you can do that while you are cleansing your cauldron. So how you actually do this is to first dip your cauldron in cool water. Uh, it's often recommended to use a running stream because that's like the power of the current will wash away any sort of weird energy that's in your cauldron. But if you don't have a stream, obviously, <laughs> do whatever feels right to you. You could use the water of your shower or a garden hose, just that running motion to cleanse it off, and then dry it off thoroughly with a towel. We don't like sitting water on or in a cauldron because that will cause it to rust, and you definitely can remove cauldron, rust from cast iron, but it is kind of tricky and a pain in the butt, so it's just easier to not let it rust in the first place. So after you've done that, you just want to mix sea salt and olive oil. You could also use almond oil, but olive oil is tends to be the most common option. And you want to rub that mixture all over the inside and outside of your cauldron to the best of your ability. And then place your cauldron in your oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit for about 90 minutes. And then turn off the, aldr- the oven, wait for the cauldron to cool, And then pour the salt residue, which is now going to be black, black salt, into your airtight jar to use on your future spells. And then rub it again with a little more salt and oil inside and outside of the cauldron and set it back in the oven, but this side upside down for another 90 minutes at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And then let it cool and it is all set to use. So then, of course, let's talk about the different ways that you can use your cauldron. 
So for all of these and for the instructions on how to make black salt, I post show notes on witchwednesdays.com and over on Patreon. So you don't have to worry about taking notes or trying to remember all of this. It is all going to be written down for you to help you out there. (laughs) But there are a lot of different ways to use a cauldron. The most common way, and I think one of the only ways that some witches use their cauldrons nowadays is for burning incense, but obviously they can be used for a lot more. We're going to get into that. But burning incense is definitely the most popular because you can burn loose incense, which you just place a charcoal disc directly in the middle of the cauldron and put the loose herbs and incense on top of that. Uh, Incense cones are also very simple to use. You just set the cone inside and light the tip of it. But you can also use incense sticks where you just light the end and let the smoking end rest gently inside the cauldron. It will not burn out. Um, So those are all very popular options. People like to leave that in one place, like sitting on an altar, or hold it, if it's a lighter one, by the handle and go from room to room for any smoke cleansing rituals. And of course, we've talked about before that incense smoke can be very strong, so open the windows and keep it away from pets and kids if they're sensitive to that. But beyond just using it for incense burning, there are a lot of other ways to make the cauldron useful in your life and in your practice. A popular way to use a cauldron is to collect moon water. You can set your cauldron out on a rainy night to gather the rainwater and then just note what phase of the moon um, the moon was in that night. So you know what energy that water is char- charged with and then pour it into a jar and store it until you need it for a spell. But of course, again, dry your cauldron completely after this so it doesn't rust. And you never want to leave it out for multiple nights, even if it's not raining because there's... Um, still a lot of moisture and humidity outside, and that can cause rust again, trying to avoid that. You can also use your cauldron for scrying. So scrying is just a form of divination where you have the reflective surface of the water against the black of the cauldron, and it acts as sort of a scrying mirror. Um, You can use different types of water. We can have a future episode on that about different types of water and the different energies that they have, like, you know, spring water versus ocean or things like that, or water charged with different crystals that promote psychic abilities, anything like that. So you use all those different types of water to fill your cauldron and then use that as a scrying mirror. And scrying is just staring at that in a meditative state until images start to come to you and then you figuring out what those images mean in your life and, you know, what's coming up. Another popular way to use a cauldron, similar to burning incense, but instead of burning something, you use it as an oil reed diffuser. And I will have the recipe for this on the website, but you basically mix safflower oil, vodka, essential oil, and then put reed sticks in. You've probably seen an oil reed diffuser. They sell them at Target and Pottery Barn and all of those places where it is filled with an oil and you stick the reeds in and the reeds pull that oil up and then scent the air, you can do the exact same thing in your cauldron. So I'll definitely have the exact recipe for that. And then you just leave that open and the reeds will then feed that oil out into the air until it evaporates. And you could, of course, just use it as an oil diffuser without the reeds where you would put water in, add a few drops of essential oil, and then place a tea light under your cauldron and enjoy the scents to fill a witchy space until the tea light burns down. And since you can also use a cauldron, of course, over real fire, if you have a gas stove, you can set the cauldron on your stove and do the exact same thing and be able to scent your entire home that way. One hugely popular way to use a cauldron, if you have a food safe cauldron, is to create cauldron tea. You can definitely boil magical herbs in the cauldron. You just add loose herbs to the water and heat it up. Obviously, make sure that it's totally clean before you do that. This is why a lot of witches have uh, separate cauldrons if they are going to be making 
you know, any sort of other spells or mixing ingredients or using it for incense, they have a separate one than if they are going to be putting tea or actual food in it and keeping that as sort of like a kitchen safe one as opposed to every other magical working because you don't want to ingest anything harmful left over from a previous spell. So just make sure that it's clean or have two separate ones. So if you have a small cauldron, then just lighting a tea candle underneath it will do the trick. But if it's larger, you can definitely put it on your stove and or outside over an actual fire and brew your tea that way. And of course, we have a whole episode on tea and you don't have to know how to read tea leaves just to have magical tea. You can have magical tea for you know any number of reasons. So definitely check out that episode if you're curious. If your cauldron comes with a lid, which a lot of the larger ones do, then buried cauldron spells are very popular. You can use them for both cleansing and for manifesting. So if there's something you need to cleanse, you just place it inside your cauldron with the lid on and bury it in the earth for a few hours because the cauldron will protect it from the elements while it's in there, but it also allows that earth energy to get in there and cleanse whatever that is that needs cleansing. So that could be, you know, bottles of your essential oils, candles, crystals, any like jewelry, necklaces, rings that you have, altar cloths, rune stones, anything that you need to cleanse. And you particularly enjoy working with earth energy or would like to have the stability and balance of earth energy in those items, then burying it within the cauldron to keep it protected while it is being cleansed can be a very good way. And you can also do the same thing for manifesting where you would, you know, write something on a piece of paper, you know, your journal entries or your sigils or anything that you're working to manifest into your life to put that into the cauldron and bury it. And then that earth energy will then take those hopes and dreams from your mind and bring them out into the physical world. But again, make sure not to leave your cauldron buried for too long because it can rust since there is moisture within the earth. Similar to a manifesting spell, you can also do a cauldron wishing spell where you write down your wishes onto paper, parchment, or bay leaves the same way, but then you burn them within the cauldron and then watch the smoke send those desires up into the universe. And finally, cauldron candle spells. I enjoy using a cauldron for this particular reason, because you can line your cauldron with foil and then perform the candle spell inside because it is a fireproof container, but then it's also so much easier to clean up because especially if you are doing a spell that requires a larger candle and allowing it to burn all the way down, the wax is just, can be such a mess. (laughs) Even if you are, you know, doing wax readings and you the purpose is to get the wax out of it. It still can just go everywhere and be a giant mess. So keeping it on the foil in the cauldron makes for a much easier cleanup. And if you have a larger cauldron, you can use a variety sized candles. Even if you have a small one, you can use a birthday candle. You just melt the bottom to make it stand up right in the candle. But if you have, or in the cauldron, but if you have a bigger cauldron, you can use bigger sized candles or you know, place several candles in there to make the, you know, shape like a pentacle, if that's what you use or something like that. Um, of course, again, fire safety, never leave a candle unattended, even if it isn't a cauldron that is fire safe and everything. But that is probably one of my favorite ways to use it because you can do absolutely any candle spell in there and keep it contained and easy to clean up. You can, of course, also use your cauldron in your kitchen witchcraft and just use it in the kitchen like you would any other pot you can cook in it. So it is used for cooking food. That was the original purpose of a cauldron. And you definitely can use it for that and use it for not only teas, but any sort of herbal remedies and things like that. So it is definitely usable in the kitchen for a lot of different reasons. And the last way that I want to mention that a lot of witches like to use it is as altar decoration, of course, just to look pretty, but also to uh, stand in for certain elements on the altar. So it is a, like I mentioned, a symbol of the goddess. So if you need a symbol for the goddess on your altar, if you are Wiccan or work with any number of goddesses, that would work. But it also works for most of the other elements. Obviously, it is associated with fire, 
in water, like we talked about, but it is also can be associated with air if you are working with smoke and put the incense inside. And it can be associated with the earth as well, since iron is an earth element, comes from the earth. So it can represent all four elements on your altar if you need to save space and use it for that purpose to represent all four or in the the place of any one of those four. We talked about traditionally how to set up an altar and where to place things and using that in any one of those places for one of those elements, it's a very common way to get more use out of your cauldron. So those are all of the different ways that I wanted to mention. You can use it, enjoy it. And if you are interested in getting a cauldron, all the places that you could possibly find one. I will have links to some good options on the website and on Patreon. If you don't have one and you're looking to buy one or just compare the different sizes, there are a lot of good places out there that I will link to to sort of help you out with that. But if you have any other ways that you use your cauldron that I did not mention you'd like to discuss, then definitely head over to the Discord server. I will have that linked on the website and on Instagram and join the community over there because there are lots of witches over there constantly sharing how they use tools in their practice. Uh, Not everyone has a cauldron or has a need for one, but if it's something that speaks to you, then those witches can definitely help you out with different ways that you can use it to make it most useful in your practice. But let me know how you use yours, if you have one, or if you got one in the Beltane box, how you plan on using that after the Beltane holiday is over. Let me know on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast, and I will see you next week for the Beltane episode, which I have a guest host for, so I think that should be a lot of fun, and I will see you then. Need even more witchcraft? Subscribe to Patreon for exclusive bonus content three times a week, and order Sabbath boxes and other supplies at witchwednesdays.com. Be sure to follow on Instagram at Witch Wednesdays Podcast.